Native to Japan, wasabi grows naturally along stream beds. It's considered as yama aoi, meaning no part of the plant is wasted. There are over 18 varieties, and they are considered to be one of the most difficult plants to grow outside of its natural habitat. Let's understand the fundamentals of urban wasabi agriculture so you too can start a wasabi dynasty and enjoy them fresh from your garden. Seeds can be collected late spring. They're ready when the pods swell and the vines start drying up. Scarify pods for easier seed extraction. The Ruma Amazama wasabi contains 2 to 6 seeds per pod. The seeds will not germinate if planted after collecting. Stratify seeds in the refrigerator to simulate their natural habitat. Storing them in near freezing temperatures will break their embryonic dormancy phase. Organic soil medium is strongly recommended for container gardening. The organic mixture used consists of coconut coir, composted mulch, perlite, worm castings, and vermiculite. Coconut coir is the shredded outer husk of a coconut. It's extremely effective in germinating seeds. For a successful seed germination, use organic potting soil topped with coconut coir. Repeat this process if a smaller container is preferred. Spread the coconut coir evenly across the surface. This creates a stable environment for the seeds to germinate. So four dozen or more seeds, wasabi seeds have a very low germination rate. Top off seeds with a thin layer of coconut coir. This provides a moist environment without ever oversaturating, which may lead to mold and rotting issues. Avoid using unfiltered water. The high TDS content contains calcium, chlorine, fluoride, and traces of copper that could destroy the seeds. Keep the seedling tray in a cool and shaded area. Generously mist the seeds daily to provide a fresh supply of nutrients. After 3-4 to four weeks, you should see signs of germination. Cotyledons will appear followed by a true leaf a week later.
The sign of a true leaf signifies a developed root system. It's ready for transplanting. Wasabi is very resilient and can thrive in harsh situations. The optimal conditions include cold air, humid environment, constant oxygenated water, and a consistent temperature of 16 to 18 degrees Celsius, equivalent to 60 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Transplant seedlings when possible. This encourages growth and provides them dedicated nutrients. There are multiple ways to propagate wasabi plants. The most efficient and productive method is the vegetative propagation. This process allows the plant to retain a root system, which is extremely important during its recovery stage. Prune large and weak leaves when repotting. This encourages the growth hormones to jumpstart the development stage. Another method of propagation is pruning offshoots from the rhizome and replanting them. Mother plants can produce 10 to 20 plantlets in a year, depending on the cultivar. Not to be confused with vines, offshoots potentially grow into a rhizome. To ensure high success rates in vegetative propagation, prune wants to develop roots. Use tall containers. This encourages a vigorous root development. A 1020 tray can be used to house four inch tall containers during the early stages of the wasabi plant growth. The best time to propagate plants is during fall when the plants are most active. River pebbles or gravel is an option if the container of soil has poor drainage. The pebbles will help the soil drain and prevent the roots from getting clogged, which leads to root rot. Fill the container with soil. Avoid packing. This causes poor drainage. Dig a finger deep opening for the plant. After a year, the growth of the plant reaches maturity, and a small rhizome can be harvested. Extend the growth if desired by transplanting to a 1020 tray, or other recommended methods such as aquaponics or larger containers. The aquaponic method is eco-friendly, simple, stable, and modular. Any additions or reductions will not impact the ecosystem to the point of decimation. Use coarse river pebbles for the growing medium. Avoid using any clay or dirt. It will contaminate your aquaponic ecosystem. Wasabi plants don't have a large root system when using the aquaponic method. This is due to the plant being able to access nutrients when needed. The container method is universal and very flexible. It's versatile and urban agriculture friendly. It's much easier to manage on a small scale. They grow extremely well in enclosed and controlled environments. Construct a greenhouse to provide the perfect environment for wasabi plants. This protects them from the unwanted natural elements in addition to pests. Accessibility to the plants, fertilization, and saturation can be completed several at a time. Plants will not suffocate if cared for routinely. 
Fresh water contains enough oxygen for several days. The hydroponic method is not recommended due to the artificial component involved and high maintenance of stabilizing the liquid solution. If you like wasabi leaves, this is a great solution, but rhizome development is extremely poor. Extend your growth in a 10-20 tray if there are multiple propagated plants. Use organic liquid fertilizers for wasabi plants. Avoid using any chemicals. This will create health issues for the plants, also ruining the taste. Worm tea reaches its optimal stage once it develops a clear golden color. As their feeding regimen, wasabi plants respond very well to pond water in conjunction with worm tea. Do not worry about overfeeding with this solution, the worm tea is completely neutral. Worm tea is not only an organic fertilizer, but is also an organic pesticide that can be used as a foliar spray to repel chitinase insects such as ants, aphids, and earwigs. Repot if the plants are root-bound. Even if you don't, they'll continue to grow along the channels outside of the drain holes. After 18 months, the plant will develop vines once it reaches maturity. Prune vines if seeds are not desired. If regular pruning isn't completed, wasabi plants will grow naturally into multiple rhizomes. Engage in regular pruning to ensure the health of the plants. This helps mitigate any issues you come across before it leads to severe complications. Prune vines without seed pods to help the plant focus energy into growing and not maintaining unnecessary resources. Remove dried leaves to prevent fungal infections and mold. This is a high risk for wasabi plants. This also attracts unwanted pests due to lack of airflow. Eliminate the waste cycle and create organic fertilizer in the process by composting, or feed these delicious snacks to your worm bin. For a complete guide on how to set up a worm bin, explore my channel. Remove the aggressive growing vines. Leave one per plant if seeds are preferred for future germination. The wasabi rhizomes are brown during this stage because they're actually stems of bark. They can be removed by scraping or cleaning off with a tawashi brush. Vines are extremely delicious when pickled, chopped up into sauces, or served in poke for a delicious spice instead of onions. Vermicompost any unhealthy or wilting vines. Wasabi trimmings contain antibacterial properties to help preserve any additional food scraps fed to the worms. Place in hole to preserve the nutrients and allow the worms to enjoy the meal. Wasabi plants are subject to many pests such as aphids. They'll easily succumb to the invasion if not controlled. Health concerns such as disease, infections, and even untimely death to plants will occur. The aphid population will grow exponentially in a matter of days if left unchecked. An organic approach to managing this plague is by releasing general predators such as this adorable ladybug or manbug. They have an insatiable appetite when the aphids are on the menu. Young mantises also prey on aphids. Once they reach maturity, they no longer eat aphids. 
Adult mantis do, however, prey on cabbage worms, but not slugs, which is another major threat to wasabi plants. Eradication of cabbage worms involve assistance from Mother Nature with birds, manual removal, and introducing parasitic wasps. These worms are easy to control compared to slugs and snails, which destroy your plants just by crawling over it. Prevent this by keeping plants in an elevated area. These plants require a constantly cool and moist environment. Although they will survive in extreme heat and sun exposure, it isn't recommended as the plant becomes stressed and may perish in the process. This plant has been exposed to 34 degrees Celsius, equivalent to 94 degrees Fahrenheit, directly in the summer sun for an entire day. While it may appear the plant is extremely sad, we can make it happy again. Start by pruning discolored and dried leaves. Place plant in a shaded area with airflow to start the rejuvenation process. Soak plant with worm tea 2 to 3 times until the root ball is saturated, followed by a mist of clean water. The plant will slowly recover in a few hours once microbial life is restored. Monitor plants closely that have the following conditions. Yellowing leaves, too much to too little water, allow the plant to drop a bit before watering. Excessive watering deprives the roots from oxygen, an essential nutrient to the plants. A healthy plant will have a vibrant green, heart-shaped leaf. Brown edges on leaves are caused by environmental stress such as dry winds, lack of water or oxygen being unevenly distributed to the roots. Dried leaves at the rhizome, but the rest of the plant looks healthy. The plant itself is growing and it just needs minor pruning. Curled or damaged leaves, inspect for pests underneath the leaves and under containers where they hide. Prune leaves if they're severely damaged. This will help them recover much quicker than retaining the damaged leaf. Dried and brown leaves are caused by overwhelming exposure to sunlight. Prune leaves to encourage development of new leaves. Wasabi plants do not like sunlight. Keep these plants in full shade, plenty of cool airflow, and mist daily, they'll slowly heal. Black and brown spots on leaves, this is caused by a bacterial or fungal infection transmitted by an insect poor water quality, or contaminated soil. Aid plants in recovery by applying copious amounts of warm tea. This helps strengthen their immune system and protect them against any infections. Oversaturation of warm tea is highly beneficial to wasabi plants and is encouraged. Harvest wasabi early in the morning when the juices are rich. This makes the plant extremely sweet and clean tasting. 
The rumor is common here in the US. Azumiro Matsumura is only found in Japan, and Mazuma is rarely found in the US. Wasabi essentials include a Struxian grater, the washi brush, and a bamboo scraper. Mazuma has a purple outer ring, mild sweetness, and very spicy. The rumor is bright green, mild heat, and bounce with a sweet flavor. Matsumura is light green, creamy, and extremely sweet with a sharp heat. Prepare wasabi by removing leaves, roots, and stems. The age of the wasabi doesn't affect the taste as much as the shape of their growth. Grate the rhizome in a circular grinding motion. This breaks down the cellular structure to release the spice known as allylal isothiocyanate. A uniform rhizome will yield a quality taste compared to an uneven growth. Collect the wasabi with the bamboo scraper and allow 3 minutes before serving. You'll notice a sweet flavor followed by a spice. If consumed too early, you'll miss this opportunity. Wasabi is best experienced with sashimi, shabu shabu, or seared Kobe beef. When preparing sashimi, it is recommended to use knives designed for the purpose. I use the Shigifsa Yanagaba to slice the sashimi after the fillet. Grate wasabi as needed and enjoy your sashimi platter. Release the spike. Wait, what? Allo, Lyle, Lyle, what? <laughs> what? What? What is this? Allo, Lyle, L. Allo, Lyle, Iso, Dio. Allo, what? Allo, okay. Allo, Lyle, Iso, Dio, Cyanite. No, wait. Allo, Lyle, Iso. Allylyl isothiocyanate. Yes! <laughs>